Hello, in the previous lectures we discussed about micro strip circuits. We started with micro strip bandpass filter, then we tried to design micro strip band reject filter. After that we tried to design two way power divider and then we saw by inserting a isolator how we can use the power divider as a power combiner. After that we tried to design four port red trace coupler and then we saw that using this four port red trace coupler if we feed a power at port 1 how we can measure half power at two ports and the third port is isolated. So, up to now we discussed about micro strip circuits only. Since we know in this course we are also covering antennas. So, in this particular lecture we will be firstly taking antennas. So, we will design micro strip antenna first. After that we will try to design active circuits. So, let us start CST microwave studio and try to design micro strip antenna. So, for that open CST and create a new project use microwave and RF optical option and then select antenna. And since we know micro strip antenna is a planar structure, so select the planar module only and create a template. I have already discussed these things in previous lectures, so I will not talk more in detail about these things. So, in the previous lecture you already know how to calculate the length and width of micro strip antenna. So, I have given here the expression of length and width of micro strip antenna. In this particular lecture we will try to design micro strip antenna for Wi-Fi frequency band that is 2.4 to 2.483 gigahertz. Now, if you use the previous expression that is L equals to C upon 2 F naught under root epsilon R plus 1 by 2 and other expression whatever is given in this particular slide. So, by using these expressions you can calculate these dimensions. So, these are the dimensions we have calculated using the expressions for micro strip antenna. So, the W for patch will be 4.7 centimeter and the length of the patch will be 3.8 centimeter and the substrate length and width we will be taking 6 centimeter. So, let us try to design in CST. So, we have created a project open CST and firstly just design substrate. So, to design a substrate select the brick name it as substrate and define all the parameters in terms of variables. So, we have given the parameter L sub for substrate length and W sub for substrate width and H sub for substrate thickness. And the substrate that we are taking here is RT deroid 5870, its dielectric constant is 2.32 and the thickness that we are taking is 1.6 mm. So, we will try to just find out whether the substrate is available in this particular CST library or not. So, just to check the substrate, check in the library option. So, if you see here, you can see RT5870. So, the sub load this particular substrate and then you give the dimension L substrate we have taken 60 mm, W substrate again we have taken 60 mm and thickness of the substrate we have taken 1.6 mm. So, just enter all the values and you can see this polygon created corresponding to the substrate dimension. Now, we should design ground plane. So, if you try to recall what is micro strip antenna. So, basically if you try to visualize this is a substrate then at the bottom you have a ground plane and on the top you make the patch of your desired dimension then you try to feed using coaxial feed. So, in previous lectures whatever type of feed we use that feed is micro strip feed. So, in this particular antenna design we will be using coaxial feed. So, we will 
show you how to design the coaxial feed also. So now to make ground plane just select this layer and then use extrude option to make ground and name it as ground and give some thickness for ground plane. Here we will give the substrate thickness of 0.035 mm and select this material as PEC. So, so far we have made the ground plane and the substrate. Now you enable local coordinate system to make the geometry of microstrip patch. Select this particular upper layer and align your WCS with the upper layer. Now you try to make the dimensions of patch, again select brick, press escape and then give variables corresponding to the patch dimension. So we are making it along the origin, so we are keeping the, the origin of local coordinate system as the center point and we are making the geometry symmetric along the center point. Again the thickness of copper you take 35 micron that is T in this case the variable name is T and name it as patch. So as I calculated this is 38 mm the length of the patch is 38 mm and width of the patch is 47 mm and you see. Now if you try to see here this is the patch dimension. So, so far we have made the ground plane, substrate and the patch. Now we need to feed. So we know from the conventional theory of microstrip antenna that feed should be placed between L by 4 to L by 6 where L is the length of the substrate. So we will see how to place this feed. So just to make a feed select the bottom side that is ground plane align your WCS with this particular face and then you give a offset. So in this particular case we will take the feed position at 7.5 mm it lies between L by 4 to L by 6 you can try by calculating these dimension and you can check. So just transform this local coordinate system so you can see here this is length and this is width. So we need to move uh, along U coordinate. So in U coordinate you gave some parameter X feed and just give the value as 7.5. So you can see we have transformed. Now we need to make the coaxial feed over here. Now I just want to tell you a little bit about the connectors. So in this particular case we will be using SMA connector. So firstly I will tell you there are various type of connectors. One of the connector is N type connector. You can see in this geometry this is N type of connector. Here if you see the inner diameter of this conductor is 3 mm whereas the outer diameter of this conductor that is this one is 10 mm. So you need to select the dimensions accordingly because this inner and outer diameter corresponds to 50 ohm whereas in the middle you can see this white color this is Teflon. So these dimensions you can calculate using the line calculator that I have already told you in the first class. This connector is generally used when we want to feed with high power or if you want to make the antennas at lower frequency then obviously the dimension will be large. So this particular connector will provide better support so that in lower frequency range we use N type of connectors. Another type of connector is SMA type of connector. So this is SMA type of connector. Here you can see this inner conductor, inner cylinder metallic one. The diameter of this particular conductor is 1.2 mm and the outer diameter is 4 mm approximately and in between the Teflon is inserted. So we will try to make this geometry. So when we use this particular connector to feed it, so this particular inner conductor will be connected to the patch and the outer conductor this should be connected to the ground plane. So in the similar way we will try to make this geometry in CST microwave studio. So to make this again go to CST, 
and make a cylinder here. So, let us take the outer dimension plus take some extra length. So, if you see in this particular connector, so this inner diameter of the outer conductor is 4 mm and the outer dimension will be little more. So, we will take some extra dimension, maybe take the variable as extra and then thickness is minus t. So, this variable name, name it as r out and take r out as 2 mm and extra may be 0.2 mm and make this conductor. So, firstly you need to make this particular place. So, you need to subtract this from the ground plane. So, select ground plane then use boolean option and then subtract and then cut this solid. You can see we have cut a slot here. Now, we should make conductor here. So, to make the conductor firstly we will be making outer conductor. So, to make outer conductor go to cylindrical option, go to cylinder, select R out plus extra as outer radius and R out as inner radius and W you take little extra. So, maybe give the variable name as add and use R out. Okay. So, give the value of add variable as maybe 0.5 mm, name it as outer conductor okay. So, you can see here we have made outer conductor. Now, we need to make the Teflon. So, to make Teflon again select circular cylinder escape, name it as Teflon, give the variables. So, we know the inner radius of Teflon should be equivalent to the radius of inner conductor and outer radius should be equivalent to the inner radius of the outer conductor. So, name it as R out and R in. And for Teflon again give the same thickness and then this is minus T. So, this Rn will be 0.6 mm because I told you the di diameter of the inner conductor in case of SMA connector is 1.2 mm. So, the radius will be 0.2. Now, for the Teflon we need to select the material. So, select here and then try to search whether Teflon is available in the library or not. So, you can see Teflon is available, we will try to load this one and then press ok. So, so far we have made the Teflon and the outer conductor. Now, we should make the inner conductor and we know now that the inner conductor should be between the ground plane and the patch that is on the other side of the substrate. So, again make cylinder name it as inner conductor, then the outer radius of inner conductor will be R in that is 0 0.6 mm radius. Now, if you try to notice that this W minimum will be W coordinate which corresponds to patch. So, that will be minus twice of T minus H substrate. So, this contains the substrate thickness and the thickness of both copper. So, just enter these values and then add and select the material as PEC. Now, you can see we have created inner conductor, outer conductor and the Teflon and we have made the coaxial connector. So, you can see if you hide this particular you can see this your inner conductor is making the connection with the outer patch. You can see it is going inside this particular substrate. Now, we need to provide the feed so, or before this just save it. So, to save select option give name as maybe antenna or MSA. Okay. Then we need to excite it. So, to excite it again select this particular phase 
and give some extra dimension to waveguide port. So, maybe take that variable x and give that much of extra length. So, basically when you want to excite a port, the dimension corresponding to port should be such that, that it should cover the whole geometry. So, we just to ensure this we take little extra dimension. So, this is the one. So, far we have created the geometry and we have made the port. Now, we need to give other details like frequency, give frequency. So, we designed this antenna for 2.45 gigahertz. So, we will take the dimension between 2 and 3 and we will see where it resonates. Then we need to see background properties, it is normal. So, we need not to change it again for boundaries, again we need to check it is open air space in all the directions. So, we need not to change anything. Next part is we should place the monitor just to see its behavior in its far field. So, we will put far field monitor. So, click on this, right click new field monitor, put the far field monitor at 2.45 gigahertz. E field monitor, then H field monitor and far field monitor also. Okay. So, we have made three monitors at 2.45 gigahertz, one corresponds to far field and other two corresponds to E field and H field. So, you can see there were too many options, you can select the option according to your requirement. Now, I'll start the simulation. So, you can see here again in the progress window it is showing you what things it has already simulated and what is the process that is going on. One more thing I want to emphasize in this window you can see all the parameters whatever we entered. So, if at later stage if you want to change these parameters you can change. So, suppose if my feed point is not at the proper location and if I want to change I can simply change it here it will automatically update. We need not to go to that particular component just to make the change. We will simply change here and it will automatically update. So, that is the advantage of using the parameters instead of constant values. So, it will take some time. So, in between if you want to see the results you can see from here it is showing you, but you cannot rely on these results because it is showing you the results for the middle stage. So, there are many conditions which it has not incorporated. So, now simulation is over. Now, we will try to analyze the results and we will see in what manner this particular antenna is behaving. So, just go to 1D results and then go to S parameter. When you go to S parameter, you will see this window. Just see here it is resonating at this frequency. Now, if you want to locate this particular frequency, right click show axis marker to minimum, you will see this frequency is 2.456 gigahertz. So, we design what this antenna for 2.45 gigahertz, now it is resonating at approximately at the same frequency. There is one more thing that I want to show you, here are too many options. So, you can select the option according to your requirement. So, suppose if you want to see these S parameters in linear scale, you can select this option. If you want to check the real part, you can select this option for imaginary and for phase, you can select the relevant option. There is one more option Z Smith chart. So, I want to highlight here, you can see this is Smith chart and this point corresponds to 50 ohm whereas this corresponds to open circuit and this corresponds to short circuit. Now, if you want to match your antenna, so your target is to match with this particular point. Now, if you want to see the bandwidth, we know that in general uh, almost everywhere we consider VSWR less than 2 frequency. So, to locate that frequency, right click, plot properties, then reference circle, use show circle and go to VSWR and then put 2. So, you see here corresponding to VSWR 2 the circle is created. So, these are the frequency points and we are getting the bandwidth between these points. The same thing you can see in S parameter plot in dB scale also. Here if you try to put the 10 dB markers use this option show measure line and then try to use this 
10 dB coin. So this is the bandwidth that you are getting between 2.432 to 2.483. This particular point will corresponds to VSWR equals to 2 circle. The next thing is how will it behave in far field, so how will be its radiation pattern. So to see the radiation pattern go to far field, select this option and try to see. So this is the radiation pattern you can see for the microstrip antenna. Now if you see here just enable this show structure then structure transparent and then fire field transparent. So if you try to visualize here you can see this here the structure is shown. So this is radiating in the broadside direction. So in the plane perpendicular to the substrate. So this validates that it is a broadside antenna. Here you can also see that the directivity is 7.2. Now if you want to see the gain you can right click far field properties go to plot mode, select realized gain and then apply. So you see the gain is 6.95 dB. Now if you want to check this radiation pattern in 2D plot, right click, then go to general, select polar plot, apply. So you can see this radiates in broadside direction. So the frequency is 2.45 gigahertz because we have put the monitor at 2.45 gigahertz and the beam width corresponding to this is 85.1 degree and the side lobe level is minus 17.4 dB. So this is how we try to check the parameters of the antenna. Now suppose if you are interested to see its current behavior and other things. So to see the current behavior go to 2D results. Go to this option and check here. You see here and just try to see, just try to animate this. If you see in absolute scale, so this is how it will look like. Okay. Now, if you animate this, this is how it will behave. If you see in H field, if you see here, just try to see absolute scale. Along the length we know that in the middle the current is maximum, on the edges the current is minimum. So it is validating our concept of microstrip antenna. So now if you want to plot the gain, so to plot the gain of this particular antenna, you can go to this particular option, post processing, then use result template then select far field and antenna properties, then select far field results, then select maximum gain over frequency okay, and then evaluate. Since we put the monitor at only one point, this is showing me the gain at one particular one point. Now in simulation if you give the frequency range then it will use those points and it will plot the gain. So in this way you can plot the gain versus frequency plot, similarly directivity versus frequency plot and other things. Now just to show you the gain versus frequency uh, plot, I will simulate it over the frequency range, go to far field monitor and then use this step option, step width and give the range maybe take the step size of 0 0.05 and then press OK. You can see it has created number of monitors or you can also use the broadband monitor. Then you start the simulation. Now it will take some time so wait for the simulation to be over. Now you try to see the gain. So you can see here when we took the frequency point this gain will look like this curve. So it has calculated the gain at all the frequencies. So this is how we plot the gain versus frequency curve. Now we will try to make active circuits in CST and we will see how we will design these active circuits in CST and then we will try to analyze the results of CST. So 
to simulate CST, go to file, select new and recent and use this circuit and system option. When you see this, you will see window like this. Now if you see here, there are various options. Okay, now if you want to make normal RLC component, you can use these options. Now if you want to use some IC or other things, you can accordingly select the proper option. So today we will try to design this MMG3003 NT1 amplifier. We will try to incorporate the S2P file of this particular amplifier and then we will try to observe the results. Now if you see here. So in general whenever we try to design any amplifier using the IC, most of the manufacturers provide S2P file. If they do not provide, they provide you S parameter. So here if the S2P file is already available, we can directly use that particular file. But if the file is not available, only S parameters are available, I will tell you how to make the S2P file. So, we will just open the data sheet of this particular amplifier. If you see here, this is the data sheet of this particular amplifier. If you see here, they have not given the S2P file. If you try to google it, you will not find the S2P file. But if you see in data sheet, they have provided you the S parameter file. You can see all the biasing conditions they have given and the S parameters they have given. So, we will try to make the S2P file using this option. So, to make the S2P file, we need to just provide some basic information. I will tell you, just open the notepad and then just give this information. So, the important information here, if you see, these are the biasing conditions. So, the VCC equals to 6.2, VDC, ICC and other things, these are biasing conditions. If you use this colon, they are in comment form. So, you need not to provide these things. The thing that is necessary for S2P file is this. If you see here, the first part corresponds to the frequency. So, if you are using the frequency in megahertz range or hertz range or whatever, type of data is given in data sheet. So, whatever type of data is given in data sheet, you can give the parameter accordingly. So, in our data sheet, the data is given in megahertz form. So, we have written here the megahertz. Then the next is corresponding to the parameter, which type of parameter you are trying to analyze. So, in our data sheet, the S parameters are given. So, the second variable will be S parameter. And the next part is the corresponding to the magnitude. So, we are trying to check the magnitude of S parameter. So, it corresponds to magnitude. And the next part is the resistance. The next is the value of that particular resistance. So, we are trying to normalize our amplifier with 50 ohms. So, that is why these parameters are selected. So, you can skip all those lines because those are just comment to make the person familiar with what type of parameters are given. So, like we will be giving uh, frequency and then magnitude and angle. So, just to make it easy for other users, we have written these comments. It is not mandatory. So, these are the lines that you need to put. So, I will show you the uh, S2P file of uh, MMG, just open notepad and I will just open the S2P file. Yes, if you see here, these are the comments. This is the uh, parameters which I was talking about and then these are again comments and these are the values which I have taken from the data sheet. So, all you need to do is you need to just put these values and then save this file as .s2p file. Okay. Now, you come to again CST simulator, use this options data import, then use this touchstone block. When you drag this into the layout window, it will ask for the S parameter file. So, we will select the relevant S parameter file. So, in this particular block, we have imported the S2P file of MMG. Now, we will try to make the geometry that is given in the data sheet for this particular IC. So, in general, most of the IC provides you the supporting biasing circuits and the coupling circuits. 
So this is the geometry that we will try to make out. Now if you see here, this is the geometry. I have given here all the dimensions. So this is our DUT and it contains the S parameter file. Then we need to make the transmission line. So we will just make the transmission line. Go to micro step and use this option micro step and drag it here. When you drag it, you see this option here. You can see various parameters, okay? And you can select the parameters according to your requirement, whatever is given in the data sheet. Here in our data sheet is in the data sheet of MMG 3003, they have taken the epsilon as 4.1 and the thickness they have taken 0.8 mm. So, we will change the thickness and the epsilon is epsilon accordingly. Then for the micro step line, we will just simply use the dimensions whatever are given in this particular data sheet. So, you see this Z2 is 0.575 inches and 0.058 inches. So, all the tracks they have the width corresponding to 50 ohm. So, that is why you can see in all the tracks the width is 0.058 inch. Now, if you see here just give these dimensions when you select this you can see this length and width options are enabled. I will just change here it to inch. If you have the information in mm you can put it directly and then I will edit it. So, I will give the width as 0.058 and then sorry then the length is 0.575 okay. Similarly, you have roughly 4 or 5 steps. So, I will just simply copy paste and further I will change it. You can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 micro strip lines you have. So, I will just simply copy paste it here 1, 4, 5 and I will just try to locate it and then I will change the dimensions accordingly. So, for first block this z first block and the last block the length is 0 0.347 inches. So, we will change it 0 0.347. Similarly, for last block it is 0 0.347. For the second block if you see it is 0 0.575 we have already given that. So, for third block it is 0 0.172 inches. So, just enter the values whatever are given and then for the next block it is 0 0.062 okay. And then you see that they have used some decoupling capacitor. So, I just want to tell you in the S2P file they incorporate the biasing condition. So, it is not necessary for you to make this particular layout. So, in S2P file they use the biasing circuits. So, they incorporate all the biasing related criteria. So, you need not to use this particular component because these are the biasing components. So, the all information that you need to use is this these micro step line and the decoupling capacitor. So, we will just make these components and then we will use the S2P file in DOT. Okay. So, the value of C1 and C2 is 47 picofarad. So, we will use this to use this components select this and just bring it here ok. One is this again copy paste before Z6 you put another capacitor. and the third capacitor is placed between Z4 and Z5. Okay. And rotate this. Okay. Now, you try to make the connection. Make this connection, connect it here. Similarly, use this connector, connect it here 
again use connector and make the connection between different components and then put ground here and change these values of these capacitors you can change the value here so the value of decoupling capacitor was 47 picofarad similarly for this capacitor put 47 picofarad and for this value was 1.2 picofarad so put these values make all the connections and at this port you use the external corrector okay and then make the connection between these connector and the first step similarly use the second connector at this end and make the connection between these okay so we have made all the connections you can see now we need to set the task so to set the task again go to this option go to s parameter okay then you give here the frequency range so if we give the frequency range the data that was given in s parameter file s2p file was from 0.1 to 3.6 gigahertz but these conditions we have taken for 800 to 1100 megahertz so we'll select the frequency range accordingly so we, in this case we will take the frequency range between 0.6 and 1.2 gigahertz and press okay and then update when you update it go to navigation tree and then see the parameters if you see here just try to analyze these results so you can see this is showing us the gain above 20 dB this is s22 and this one is s11 so you can see it is well matched in this frequency range you can also set other parameters in the task window itself i'll just show you here select this amplifier option select this option and you can sweep the frequency range of your interest and you can analyze the results in this way okay so this is what you need to do for active circuit simulation so in this lecture we tried to design micro strip antenna then we tried to see the behavior of micro strip antenna we tried to see how does it behave in far field region then we tried to see the gain versus frequency plot we also saw how to who see the radiation pattern in 2d and 3d plot we also saw how we should analyze s parameter results in smith chart and in db plot after that we tried to design the amplifier we use the mmg amplifier to simulate in the similar way you can use other amplifiers so in general most of the manufacturers provide you s2p file if they don't provide you s2p file they provide you s parameters so you can use those s parameters to make the s2p file then you can provide the supporting connections and accordingly you can do the active circuit simulations and you can analyze the results accordingly so in the next lecture my colleague will show you the simulation of mixers in a different software that is awr so thank you very much we will see you in the next lecture